In this video, we're completing example three. We are asked to find the natural domain for each function below. Now, there are actually six questions we're completing. On this slide, you can see questions A through to C, and then we have questions D through to F on the next slide. Now, you may notice that this time we're trying to find the natural domain without a graph. All we've been given is a function this time. So how are we going to find the natural domain without a graph? Well, I've got some pointers for you. So we're just going to move to another page. First of all, it's much easier to find the domain and range when a graph is drawn. So sometimes the best solution is to actually sketch a graph of a function. But we don't always have time to sketch a graph. A lot of people make the mistake of focusing where the natural domain exists. What you need to do is actually focus on where the natural domain does not exist. So we're going to look at two types of functions here. We're going to look at a function where you have a fraction, specifically a fraction where x is in the denominator. We're also going to look at a function where you have the square root sign, such as the square root of x. So we're going to find the natural domain for each of these functions. And rather than focusing on where the natural domain exists, we're going to focus on where the natural domain does not exist. What do we mean by that? Well, we're looking for a situation where we input a value of x and no output comes from that. So we'll start with our fraction. What value can I input for x that will give me no output? Well, you might remember that you can never divide by zero, meaning that x cannot equal zero. What happens if I make x equal zero? Well, we'll bring up a calculator. 1 over 0, or 1 divide 0, gives us an error. We do not get an output when we input 0 for x. We could have tried any number other than 0. We could have done 1 divide 10. We would have got an output of 0 0.1. We could have done 1 divide negative 300, and we still would have got an output. But we don't get an output when we input zero. So we can now find the domain for this function. The domain is all real values of x except for zero. So how do I write that down? Well, I simply state that our domain is the x values where x is less than zero and also where x is greater than zero. So we get all the numbers less than zero, all the numbers greater than zero, and because we didn't use the equal sign, we're showing that x cannot equal zero. I've also seen some people write this, that the domain is all real x such that x cannot equal zero. Now that's perfectly fine to write down. Now some people make a big mistake when they write the domain for a function like this, and the mistake they make is this. They write down that the domain is such that x does not equal zero. So these two definitions are fine, but this one is not fine. And I want you to think about that. Why is it not okay to just write down that x cannot equal zero? Well, when you think about it, when you're writing down the domain, you're writing down where the function exists, whereas this is writing down where the function does not exist. So do not do this. I'm going to put a red line through it. You can see how this happens. I, I taught you earlier to focus on where the domain does not exist. And we found that x does not equal zero, which is perfectly fine to do, but it's not the solution that you write down. Your solution has to be where the domain exists. Anyway, let's look at the next function where we have the square root sign. What Inputs of x will give us no output. So we'll bring our calculator. What numbers can I substitute for x that will give me an error on my calculator? Now, I hope some of you have worked this out already. You cannot have negative values for x. When you square root a negative number, you always get an error. We'll try that for negative 5. If I square root negative 5, the calculator will give me an error. I can input positive numbers, I could find the square root of 10, 
it will give me a solution. I can even input zero, the square root of zero equals zero. So that means that x cannot be less than zero, because if it's less than zero, then it's going to be negative. So what's the domain going to be? Well, the domain is going to be x values that are greater than or also equal to zero, meaning we can only input positive numbers or even zero. So we're now going to get into the examples and I want you to look because they're either going to be fractions or square roots. All right, we'll start with question A, which is one we've already done. If f of x equals the square root of x, we know that you cannot square root a negative number. So the domain for this one will be values of x such that x is greater than or equal to zero, meaning it's got to either be positive or equal to zero. It cannot be less than zero. Now, if you're answering these questions at home and you have a computer in front of you, it definitely helps to check your answers using Desmos. So I'll bring that up now. Here we have f of x equals the square root of x. And you'll notice that the graph exists for all values greater than zero and equal to zero. It doesn't exist for any of the negative values. So that's a really good way of checking the answer to question A. Looking at question B now, you'll notice that we have a fraction. And when you see a fraction, the denominator cannot be zero because one divide zero will give us an error on the calculator. So what we do is we state that x minus five cannot equal zero. If it did, you would get an error on the calculator. Now I really want x on its own, so I'm going to add five to both sides of this equation, like so, giving me x cannot equal five. Now that I know where x does not exist, I can figure out where x does exist, and that's going to be my domain. So my domain will be x values that are less than 5 and x values that are greater than 5. Notice that we don't have the equal sign because it cannot equal 5. Let's check our answer to question B on Desmos. Here I have the function 1 over x minus 5. You can see it in blue. I also have my red dotted line, which is my asymptote. We can see that the graph goes on forever as we move to the right. We can also see that the graph goes on forever as we move to the left. But when we look at the asymptote, we know that the graph never touches or crosses the asymptote. So the graph does not exist when x is 5, which is what we stated in our response for question B. Moving on to question C, this time we have the square root sign. Now you may remember if you see the square root sign, Whatever's under the radical cannot be negative. It cannot be less than zero, which means that x plus one must be greater than or even equal to zero. Now we want to have x on its own on the left side. So we subtract the one like so, and then we get x is greater than or equal to negative one. Now you may have noticed we've written down x values where the function does exist. So this is our domain. So our domain will be values of x that are greater than or equal to negative one. Let's double check this using Desmos. Here we have f of x equals the square root of x plus one. We can see looking at the graph, it goes forever to the right. It starts at negative one. So it exists for all x values of negative one and above. That's exactly what we wrote down for our domain. All right, let's now move on to question D. Here we've got the square root sign. So once again, we cannot have a negative under the radical. So we'll write down that four x minus two must be greater than or equal to zero, meaning it's either positive or it's equal to zero. It cannot be negative. Now we need to have x on its own. So we'll start by plussing two to both sides, giving us four x is greater than or equal to two. And then we need to divide both sides by four, like so. Giving us 
x is greater than or equal to 1 half. Now we can write this as our domain. Let's check that using Desmos. Here we have the function, the square root of 4x minus 2. You can see that we have a graph that goes forever to the right and starts when x is 1 half, which is exactly what we have here. x is greater than or equal to 1 half. All right, let's now move on to question E. This time it's a fraction. We don't want the denominator to be 0. So we'll write down that 3 minus 2x cannot equal 0, and we need to isolate x. So we'll start by subtracting 3 to both sides. Some people make the mistake of trying to add 3 because they see this minus sign here. That minus sign belongs to the 2, not the 3. That's a positive 3. Anyway, we'll cancel our 3, giving us negative 2x does not equal negative 3. We need to divide both sides by negative 2. The reason we're doing this is because it will cancel out not only the 2, but the negative as well, leaving us with x not equaling 3 over 2. And the reason it's now positive is because we had two negatives here, which cancel each other out. Now we know what x cannot equal, we can simply write down the domain. The domain is values of x where x is less than 3 over 2 and where x is greater than 3 over 2. Because we didn't put in the equal sign, we're covering all values of x except where x equals 3 over 2. Let's check this using Desmos. Here we have the graph of 5 over 3 minus 2x. You will notice that we have a graph that goes forever to the left and forever to the right. We also have an asymptote. And as the graph reaches the asymptote, it gets very close but never touches or passes this point. You will notice that the asymptote occurs at the point 1 and a half. Now 1 and a half is the same as 3 over 2. So the graph exists for all x values except at 3 over 2, which is what we wrote here. Okay, moving on to question f. This time we have both a fraction and the square root sign. That means that the denominator cannot equal 0, and whatever's under the radical cannot be negative. So I'm going to start by focusing on the square root sign. I know that 2 minus x cannot be negative. We cannot have a negative number under the radical. So we'll write that down. 2 minus x cannot be negative. Now for it to be negative, it cannot be less than 0. Now some of you might have also noticed that 2 minus x cannot equal 0 either. If it did equal 0, then our denominator would become 0, and we cannot divide a number by 0. When we take both of these conditions into place, we find that 2 minus x must be greater than 0. It can't be less than 0, it can't be equal to 0, but it can be greater than 0. Now, in order to find the domain, I need to isolate x. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this 2. Remembering this is positive 2, so we're going to subtract 2 to both sides. This will give us minus x is greater than negative 2. So how do I get rid of this negative symbol? Well, you might remember this is technically negative 1 x and what we're going to do is we're going to divide by negative 1 because that will cancel the negative 1 and we need to do the same thing to the right. This will give us x on the left and positive 2 on the right because negative 2 divide negative 1 gives us positive 2. Now we can't use the greater than sign, it actually needs to be the less than sign and in case you've forgotten why, Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you need to switch the sign. So we need to switch it from a greater than sign to a less than sign. This now becomes our domain. Let's check this using Desmos. Here we have the function 3 over the square root of 2 minus x. 
you'll notice we have a graph that goes forever to the left and as it approaches the point where x is 2 we end up with an asymptote I just put it here in blue we can see that the graph goes forever to the left but never passes the point at which x equals 2 so the graph exists for values of x that are less than 2 which is what we wrote here Anyway, that concludes our video on example 3. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.